Hey everybody, it's Brian Shannon from alphatrends.net. Today is Friday, the 11th of August, 2023, and we lost some ground in the markets. Let's take a look at the numbers here. Really, for the week, the S&P only lost 26 basis points, but the semiconductors, which as we know have been the leaders, lost 5%, bringing their monthly loss to 9%, and they're now 10.25% off the year high. That's what this column is here. So you can see bonds are 15% off the high of the year, uh, biotech's 15% percent the worse uh, in compared to its yearly high. So let's take a look at these charts and make some sense of it. The S&P 500 uh, on the left, I've uh, actually had just recorded this video and uh, forgot the audio. So here we are uh, right just above the 50-day moving average. That's this line right here. And you can see that's also the location of this anchored volume weighted average price from the June gap. So that looks like a level of potential support. But when we look to the right, what we see is we were below the declining five-day moving average all week. Now, we weren't below it all week, but it was declining all week, and that kept us from buying in here. I actually took a very uh, short-term long trade and sold it right there because that's the anchored volume-weighted average price from this year's high. That's why we always set anchors to important highs and lows. Uh, back to the daily time frame on the left, this was an important low right here because that's where this move really began. And that's why I have set an anchor there, that red one. What I'd really like to see is for this market to undercut the 50-day moving average in this anchored VWAP and come down to this one right in here to come down towards about the 439 level and then perhaps start to turn sideways and we could get a bounce. Now one disturbing thing, it's not a huge thing uh, on the daily time frame, is that the direction of the 20-day moving average is declining. We haven't seen that happen in quite a while actually since back over here and that led to a deeper sell-off. Doesn't mean it's going to again, but when we look at where this market was 20 days ago, that's what this uh, vertical line is right here. This is where we closed 20 days ago. So on Monday, that means that that line will shift over one and that will become the new day 20 and Monday's action will become day one. So, or, or I'm sorry, that'll be the new day one and that'll be the day 20 in the moving average calculation. So what the point I'm trying to make is over the next week, unless we're above this level, the 20-day moving average will continue to decline. Even if we see a little, you know, slightly higher prices, it will still continue to decline. And that tells me that we're likely to continue to see some sideways to lower action in the market. And again, on the right-hand side, declining five-day moving average says, stay out of this thing for now. Let's, what I really want to see happen, let's say we don't go any lower than this. I wouldn't be excited if we rally up like this on Monday. Instead, I'd rather see it kind of, you know, do a little bit of this action, get that five-day moving average flattened out, and then start to turn higher, and then perhaps look for a long side trade over here with a stop under this level or this level. Now that's obviously taking a lot of liberties as far as what might happen and we have to focus on what the market gives us but that's one potential scenario. On the NASDAQ we have that same anchored volume weighted average price from that uh, gap higher here and we had undercut that today as well as the advancing 50-day moving average. This is where we were 20 days ago that's why that 20-day moving average is declining and over the next two weeks really we'll see that 20-day moving average continue to decline unless we get back up above this 375 level and that's been a focus level for us the last couple of weeks is that or the last week and a half is that 375 level if we get back above that it'll turn this market more neutral any rally that we see and sure you can make money on these rallies but the point is with a declining five-day moving average trade them for what they are their bounces in an intermediate term downtrend. They're okay for a day trade, but not for something that you wanna hold typically. If you buy right in here and it continues to move higher, well then simply raise your stop as the market tells you to, then decide whether or not you wanna hold overnight. But I typically will not hold overnight when we have a declining five day moving average. I've seen it too many times that those gains dissipate and you know dissolve completely. If we're to see a deeper pullback in the NASDAQ, perhaps we're gonna 
going to come down to the anchored volume weighted average price from this. I guess that was the April low, and that would bring us down towards about 355. That would certainly get people's attention. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but we're six percent off the year-to-date high so far. Maybe we're going to, you know, turn this thing sideways. But again, it's going to need a little bit more time at a minimum to get that five-day moving average to turn sideways before we can start to have any faith in a rally being able to hold. Let's start with the weekly time frame. And this is what I had drawn in last week saying, you know, this was a band of resistance. We were very careful up in this area because it had come from 170 up to 200, basically, and saying that, you know, where has it come from? It expended a lot of energy getting there into a zone that had been prior support, turned to resistance, and I was looking for a pullback. We're getting that pullback. If we continue to pull back for another week, week and a half, I'd really love that because that would set up a nice higher low here on this weekly time frame. Let's clean all that mess up and go back to the daily time frame on the left here because you can see here's the anchored volume weighted average price from that June gap and that's just below us along with the 50 day moving average so maybe we do something like this this would be really great to see and then I want to see that five day moving average flatten out for a couple days but I'm still not ready to buy I don't buy dips I encourage people do not buy the dip buy strength after the dip and strength means that it can sustain a move and it, in my uh, uh, experience, it's always told me that I want to wait for a flat to advancing five-day moving average. Otherwise, I'm going to day trade these rallies as they occur intraday. Semiconductors are really, again, you know, they've been hit the hardest here recently. What did I say? They're, you know, 10.2% off their year-to-date high. And we saw that pressure continue to build in here this week. That 20-day moving average is clearly declining. Next week, if we are unable to rally well then you know at the end of the week if we're st if we're down in this area like uh, you know somewhere down in here well then that 50-day moving average is going to start to roll over as well and uh, the week after that in particular so we've got a bunch of headwinds possibly and if we rally up you know back towards that 153 well then we're going to see that 50-day moving average uh, declining along with a 20-day in here so this 153 level is really important for these semiconductors as long as they're below that I would not look to buy and hold any semiconductor stock uh, until that situation has resolved itself. The uh, biotechs continue to be the real dogs. This kind of looks like a bearish flag in here. It doesn't mean it has to break down, but it sure looks like, you know, just a uh, weak little bounce on lighter volume relative to the decline. And those are usually resolved to the downside. I'm not necessarily real bearish on these biotechs, but I definitely don't want to own them as long as they're below 81 and, you know, let's just call it 82. As long as they're below 82, to me, they're, you know, potentially uh, going to maybe go back down and test this low over in here. So I just say stay away from the biotechs altogether. Financial stocks continue to correct and, you know, they're just all over the place. This is why I don't trade these stocks and why I'm not going to really talk about them anymore. Um, and energy names, I don't really trade these either, but they broke past resistance and the buyers are in control. If you're involved, I'd say your stop would go under here. Let's take a look at some of the big names. And you know, everyone always wants to buy Apple. Just wait. Wait to buy Apple. Wait until we see a flat to rising five-day moving average. Maybe that occurs Tuesday, Wednesday of next week, and you can get a bounce in here. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with looking for that trade, but so far there's been no reason to be a buyer. And if it bounces right in here, let's say you buy it right here, and you don't get stopped out with one of these higher lows, well then be aware of the anchored view app from that high, because that's likely to be a source of supply, similar to what we saw in the S&P 500, where it tagged it absolutely perfectly on on the money right there and then reverse lower so back to Apple you know if you're looking for a bounce maybe it bounces up to there and then take it one step at a time what I'd rather see is that it doesn't bounce I'd love to see it come down to the anchored volume weighted average price from this low and I actually kind of drew that uh, just on the gap but you know from this low right here that looks like, uh, you know, the better scenario for a little bit more panicky selling before a, a nice bounce could uh, uh, materialize. Microsoft, has there been any reason to buy this stock on the dip so far? Absolutely not. What's the direction of that five-day moving average? It continues to be lower. How about NVIDIA? NVIDIA got to its anchored volume weighted average price from the earnings where it had a strong bounce before. I don't buy the 
the pullback to the volume weighted average price. I made that very clear in my book. Instead, I want to see it as a level of interest. And when it got to that 420 level, and I look at it and say, is there any evidence the buyers are in control? Absolutely not. Because we have a declining five-day moving average, I didn't buy that, and I'm not going to buy this stock just because it's a big brand name stock that everyone's interested in doesn't mean it's a good stock to buy. It's not on sale. I would rather buy it after the sale is over and they start to uh, see, you know, see the stock go sideways a little bit and maybe it recovers from here. That would be great, you know, for the bulls. If it does this and then rallies up, fantastic. Until it does something like that, I have zero interest in buying a stock like NVIDIA. I have zero interest in buying a stock like Tesla. Tesla is almost down to the anchored volume weighted average price to the May low. I'd love to see that uh, come, come into play. That would bring it down at about 231 or so. And again, that doesn't mean that's going to be the low. It means that it's a level of interest where we're going to look for evidence that a bounce might occur but there's nothing there to suggest so far, uh, you know, on this 30 minute time frame on the right, there's nothing to suggest the buyers are stepping up in any meaningful way. In fact, it bounced to almost perfectly also from that declining five day moving average. As I've said uh, you know, hundreds, thousands of times, the single most important thing that I use for swing trades is the direction of that five day moving average. It has saved me so many from so many mistakes over the years. If you're not using it, I really highly encourage you to do so.